Hello and welcome to Stater Snack Sandwich. Today I'm going to take a quick look at Stater. Now I'm always looking for other places to get some steak. These I, you may have heard me in some, you know, heard me around in some podcasts or so forth or AMMs where AMA, sorry, where I uh, talk about my my ideas or my thoughts on the whole like eat staking, like the liquid staking derivatives. And currently there's only two major players. Uh, if you like, there's Rocket Pool and uh, Lido Staked ETH, and then there's also, I guess you can, you know, Frax is pretty up and coming, and they're they're building up quite a bit. And then you do have the centralized versions of these, you know, like Binance Staked ETH, as well as the substantial holdings of Coinbase Staked ETH. Anyhow, so I sometimes talk about my ideals of saying that, like, we need to try to, like promote other projects that are doing this but that are doing it in a way that's decentralized um rocket pool is pretty decentralized however it has a problem with scaling okay so this project here they've thought about the the current situation and the current opportunities out there and then they've decided to make a staked uh, eth version but as you can see they have a whole bunch of tokens here so they're already supporting many many chains of staked tokens so you can get staked matic staked bnb staked phantom near terra 2.0 uh hindira uh they're coming with ethereum or maybe it's live already um well it doesn't say stake now it says learn more avalanche coming soon solana coming soon so this is a place where you can Take advantage of liquid staking, okay, and uh, so forth. So I do have a flow chart for you, but uh, as always, I would suggest you to read through the docs. The docs doesn't really have anything in here about Ethereum, and I'm going to talk about Ethereum today. So if you want to know about these other blockchains, I would suggest you to come and read it. Um, the only thing I really took from the docs is the this, this section on the SD governance token, and then I did read this paper. I'll put a link to this paper in the docs or sorry, in the description of this video where it talks about ETH X. And now this this is a light paper, so there's a there will be some questions still, you know, still out there. If you read this and you want to take part in this, you might need to dig deeper than what I'm going to explain and what this actual white paper or this light paper explains by itself. So as always, you know, go check out, you know, join their Discord, go check out their Twitter ask some more questions, figure out if you uh, are interested in this project or not. So let's swing over to the flowchart and let's talk about that. If you would like to support the channel, I would suggest you to check out the secret sandwich.xyz. It's the secret sandwich NFT project. You can come here, you can mint an NFT, or you can come and check out your NFTs. Okay, so let's get back to it. We have dollar bill, we have boosted bill, and we have grandma bill, right? And now they all have some ETH. They all want to take part in this liquid staking ETH thing. Now, the reason why I've chosen these is because there are three major actors in this uh, this protocol, three major possibilities, things that you can do inside this protocol, okay? So the first one we're going to talk about is grandma. Grandma doesn't want to do any technical stuff. She just wants to have some ETH, stake some ETH, and be liquid and get some ETH. So it doesn't really matter how much she does. She can stake any amount, but let's say she stakes a grand amount, okay? Quite a bit. But uh, anyhow, she can be. she's going to be many people in reality, right? So let's, the, the key thing is that the first thing that she's going to get back, if she stakes one ETH, she's going to get back one ETH X. But one, the ETH X goes up in value as any share token does. So eventually it will be worth 99 or 0.99 or 0.998 or 0.9997 you know so it's going to go down uh, in quantity every time you stick however when you redeem you will always be able to get back the ETH that you put in plus the rewards that you've accrued okay so she puts in one she gets at one or something close to one right and then she takes that ETH uh, out into DeFi and uh, she stakes it somewhere and gets some SD token rewards now this is all like based on governance and based on like current situations so if you go to one of these protocols looking to stake your eth x and there's no sd tokens there that that, that might just be the situation at that time now again there's all the all those other tokens like phantom tokens staked phantom if you take staked phantom to uh uh beethoven x you can get uh, beats tokens as well as sd tokens and so forth so this is how you're going to get your hands on these SD tokens is by you know, participating in liquidity mining with these uh, these stake tokens. So grandma's going to stake it. Maybe I don't know where it's going to be on ETH, maybe Balancer, maybe who knows, right? 
just just takes it earns some SD tokens and uh, and that's, that's pretty much it for now okay now we have uh, boosted bill boosted bill doesn't really know much but he's a DJ and he wants to take part he wants to do new things he wants to have fun so he takes four ETH and he stakes it into the protocol he gets back his approximately four uh, ETH X and then he uses that four ETH to bond into a permissionless node okay so he's gonna need to actually run the hardware or maybe um, there might be a possibility that he can use cloud services but I do think he has to just run a, a node at his house they call these people home node operators they're permissionless all they need is four ETH now in order to spin up a node you need 32 ETH right but he only needs to bond four ETH okay now there's a lot in the uh, in that light paper where they talk about how why they justify that four ETH is enough because if you go to rocket pool I think it's 16 ETH in order to spin up a permissionless node and they've decided here that four ETH is enough so if you're thinking of taking part in boosted bills option right of running this permissionless node you're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper and try to find out why four ETH is enough okay so he stakes four ETH he that four ETH is sent to the node to to get it ready right to get it waiting okay and then as this builds up, when there's 28 ETH here, then the 28 ETH will be sent to the node as well, staked in the node. And uh, these nodes, the if there's a huge lineup of nodes, it's first come, first serve. So if Boosted Bill was the first to put his four ETH and bond it and get ready and wait, when the 28 ETH is ready, he will be the first one to, to get his node up and running. Okay, so it has now 32 ETH locked inside. And now remember, this 32 ETH is currently not withdrawable okay it's one way track okay moving on so now as time progresses you know uh, these this validator node is going to be doing its job printing blocks to the blockchain and earning eth as a result so the rewards of eth that go to this pro, uh, to this node 95% of them are taken towards uh, the 10% going to satyrs and 85% going back to the to the protocol as rewards for this ETH X. So increasing the value of ETH X over here. And 5% goes to this ETH operator. So this is basically where you would look at like his return on investment. He's only putting in four and he's getting 5% of this these rewards back. So this is what you're gonna have to do your math on and figure out is that worth it? Is it worth it like uh, in that light paper they talk about how this is substantially better than the other op opportunities where it's like 16 ETH and getting 15 percent right so you think about it you you do this kind of idea but this is basically how this system is going to work now moving on we have a dollar bill here dollar bill is a sophisticated uh investor he's run nodes in the past he knows how to do it he's got maybe already nodes with rocket pool or he's got nodes with lido or frax or whatever you know he's already has nodes he's very sophisticated and he's able to to spin up a permissioned node with this protocol now the idea here is why I have two okay because maybe there's not enough boosted bill but there's a lot of grammar right if there's a lot of grammar ETH coming in and there's 32 ETH sitting here, but no boosted bill, then these permission node operators will be able to just get that 32 ETH out and put it to work, okay? So they're, they're basically there to help that this, this uh, system will be able to scale regardless of like uh, boost not, there not being enough boosted bill, but be decentralized enough even though there are permissioned uh, node operators that are, you know, running based on, you know, being permissioned and whitelisted and so forth. Okay. Now it does talk about the community will decide if these people are to be permissioned and whitelisted or not. Okay. So moving on. So again, this node here will also re re be rewarded with ETH for staking and, and running the, the node and so forth. And again, 5% will go to boost, uh, dollar bill here. And then the, uh, the 95%, 10% will go to staters and 85% will go to the uh, ETH X token rewards. Okay, moving on. Now, the MEV tips. Okay, this is something that I didn't see in any of the other projects. There, I could be wrong. However, I, I haven't 
seeing that they give MEV and tips. Now, MEV is minor extracted value, so there could be a possibility where, you know, positive slippage and things like this, where, you know, you're paying, you know, you, you, you run a node and they, they get some MEV out of you. This MEV will be split up and also the tips. So sometimes when you want your transaction to go through faster, you increase, you give them a tip, right? So you increase the amount of gas you want to pay and then that transaction goes through faster, right? So these tips and this MEV, they will be collected, right? And instead of just taken by Stater's Lab or by these permission nodes, they will be divided up, okay? 10% goes to Stater Labs, 85% uh, goes to the the ETHX token holders, right? And then 5% will go to these permissioned node. Uh, so they're, they're incentivizing these permission nodes to really come in and make sure that there's that this ETH that is piling up here is getting utilized, okay? So you gotta remember now, Graham will put in ETH, but all of these things have been producing ETH and those ETH have been going in here as well, right? And the MEV tips. So this, this is going to be building up faster than Gramma alone is putting in ETH, okay? Now, moving on. So now, Stater Labs has collected, you know, 10% of the rewards and 10% of the uh, MEV and the tips. And they say in the docs that if you stake SD tokens, then you get a share of the Stater Labs fees, right? Now, it doesn't say in the white paper that they're going to give these fees. It's in the docs. And I'm not sure if it's actually set up or not. It kind of says based on like, governance so th this might not actually happen but it might happen in the future I, I don't know if it's happening now or not i wasn't be able able to co completely confirm this however let's say it's true and let's say it actually is into uh, integrated and it is already initialized then grandma can take her rewards right that she's been earning and she can stake them to get her share of these fees and again it doesn't have a percentage of how much of these fees will be given to them and how much will be left for the stater labs to continue to build up and uh, maintain this system right moving on now the last thing that we will talk about is the possibility it also talks about staking sd tokens in order to get preferred delegation so if you think of it like there are, let's say there are many nodes lined up and dollar uh, boosted bill came like second. Maybe he can buy a whole bunch of stater tokens, SD tokens and stake them. And then he will be at the front of the list, right? So it'll kind of give some buying pressure for these stater tokens, or maybe he will farm them and then also uh, stake them in this way. Now, I also do wonder if that's possible for undelegation because currently there's no way for you, like I said, there's a one-way track, right? This 32 ETH goes into the node, you can't get it out. But when the Shanghai upgrade does come around, then this ETH will be exitable, exitable withdrawable from these nodes. So there might be a case where you know, grandma has a lot of ETH X and she wants ETH. So she's going to redeem them instead of swapping them through the pools redeem redeem them for the eth and then that if that were to come into play then that redeeming procedure would may require one or two or several of these nodes to be closed down their eth to their 32 eth to be withdrawn so if that is the case that one of these needs to be turned like turned off and withdrawn then whose would be first it, it, i don't think it would be first come first serve i'm not exactly sure again it doesn't talk in the docs or in that light paper about the undelegation because it doesn't actually it can't actually happen yet right so i'm wondering i, I assume that staking sd tokens will put you at the back of the list for undelegation as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. I uh, hope this has been useful and interesting. And uh, like I said, I'm always looking for other possibilities, other systems for this uh, liquid staking derivative idea and uh, trying to get you know ETH staking as decentralized as possible. I think this system has a good idea of having this permissionless and then anybody who can just you know buy a, I don't know, buy a small computer and uh, you can check out the specs. I do have the specs. I might put them in the description, but uh, they might change, of course. So you can check into whether or not you want to do this. I'm definitely thinking about it myself, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not. Um, but I do like the idea that it's permissionless. But when the permissionless factor is like not sufficient, there's not enough people to to make these home uh, permissionless nodes, then the, you know, the, the, the institutionalized versions can come in and 
you know, get this 32 ETH without leaving it there idle, not being used. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and goodbye.